skipper, journalist, and devoted family man Fabrice Amadeo was brutally confronted with a truism in November 2022 when a ferocious Atlantic storm, an explosion, and fire on his boat forced him to bail out of La Route du Rhum and switch into survivor mode and evacuate his sinking boat. Two months after nearly drowning in the Atlantic, Fabrice has now dusted himself off and is all set to go on a new boat he was able to acquire in January, the former artisan's article, owned by Arnaud Boissiers. Donc nous sommes le 17 janvier et je suis dans, les, dans la cale du cargo qui a ramené mon futur bateau, mon nouveau bateau de Guadeloupe. Donc en fait le symbole déjà il est assez fort puisque c'est un cargo qui m'a sauvé sur la route du Rhum et mon nouveau bateau, le bateau du nouveau départ, arrive par cargo. Donc voilà j'ai pu découvrir depuis, depuis ce matin mon futur, mon futur bateau. C'est sûr qu'il y a un peu de boulot, hein. l'équipe euh, va avoir du, du, du travail pour, euh, pour en faire un super bateau qui sera apte à prendre le départ du Vendée Globe l'année prochaine. Mais tout le monde est hyper motivé, le bateau était, a été bien construit, on va lui mettre des dérives et ça va faire un super bateau dans quelques mois pour, pour naviguer. Aujourd'hui, le bateau rentre dans le chantier, donc il y a un gros travail qui démarre pour l'équipe pour euh, fiabiliser le bateau, en faire un bateau simple, léger et performant, et aussi réinstaller à bord, c'est très important et ça nous tient vraiment à cœur, les capteurs océanographiques de mesure de CO2, de salinité, de température et de pollution microplastique pour continuer à avoir ce, ce projet de, de, de préservation des océans et ce projet de mesure de la pollution des océans qui nous tient à tous à cœur. A très bientôt pour de belles aventures. This is your weekly sailing highlights show, The World on Water for March 17, 2023. At 1,745 hours UTC last Monday, Holsimpiabi crossed the 143 degrees east scoring longitude in first position, thus winning five new points in the ocean race. Having won the first two legs, Paul Mihat and his crew were ecstatic to add to their total.
best to find the next gear and try and match the other boats and we just had a really good skin we're uh, almost two three knots faster over the last hour Quelle vie dans ces bateaux Spécial. Et écoute, on fait toujours 26, 21 de moyenne hein, depuis 3 heures à peu près. C'est des conditions de record là pour aller vite. C'est bien d'aller vite un peu avec ces bateaux. Car il est fier, ce bout là il est en train de. Il est beau. Il est en régulière à 21. Et l'autre à 23. Alors on a fait 26, 4. 145 000 avant. Easy conditions on board this evening, but um, but it's obviously something to be happy about, and uh, <coughs> it's a long way to go to Cape Horn, a long way to go to Itajai, but um, it's good to get the maximum points here, and it will definitely do some good for the overall ranking. J'ai toujours du mal à à exprimer ma joie, on va dire, euh, tant que c'est pas fini, quoi. Je regarde, euh, on vient de passer le truc, il y a 30 nœuds de vent, on fait des plantées euh, toutes les cinq vagues. Euh, donc je suis beaucoup plus concentré sur ça, mais je suis content hein, d'avoir les 5 points. Hein. Mais regarde. Ouais, t'es pas délivré quoi. Non, oh non, oh non. Ah non, je serais certain, il hein. faut rester concentré. The huge 30 by 30 meter racing trimaran, Spindrift, skippered by Donna Bertarelli and Yen Gishard is once again readying for their attempt for the Jules Verne Trophy for being the fastest boat to sail around the world. Here they are poised and waiting for a favorable weather window. I hope soon. We've been preparing for a long time and it's the second year in a row. Bon, c'est de rester dans le rythme, on fait des séances régulièrement dans la semaine. Donc on, on, on fait jusqu'au bout. Et transforme samedi. La première opportunité qu'on a réellement eue, c'était il, il y a une quinzaine de jours. Bah, moi je suis prêt. Ouais. Les affaires sont embarquées, on attend le signal. Now it's very calm, we're not moving at all. We have put this because uh, when we go um, and there are waves, we are basically like this. Bah, je crois que la persévérance, elle vient dans la beauté du défi et de cette aventure. Donc c'est une aventure d'équipe qui représente plus de, de 30 personnes qui travaillent voilà, au quotidien sur, sur ce bateau. Quoi, la météo, donc le climat, la nature, 
qui vont dicter le tempo des opérations ici. Donc on était prêt à partir dès aujourd'hui, au milieu de journée. Voilà, Justement, on va attendre, donc on décale, on reporte de 12 heures, peut-être encore de 12 heures supplémentaires, mais on est prêt à y aller quoi qu'il arrive et tout le monde est disponible pour intervenir n'importe quoi sur le plateau. Le record est tellement difficile à battre qu'il faut avoir au moins mettre de notre côté les chances d'avoir des bonnes conditions sur les 10 premiers jours de la course. Ok, next ça on se remet en stand-by. South Seas is not good today, so we have to, to wait. And we wait, and here we are. So please wait with us. Thanks. The never-ending pursuit of excellence was all apparent on the final day of racing at the 96th Bacardi Cup and Bacardi Invitational Regatta. Biscayne Bay delivered another stunning day, with an offshore breeze changing the race track strategy. They came, they saw, they conquered in 2020, 2021 and 2022, and this year Mateusz Kuznirowicz and Bruno Prada did it again. They have well and truly sealed their place in the Bacardi Cup Book of Legends with four back-to-back -back victories. The never-ending pursuit of excellence was all apparent on the final day of racing at the 96th Bacardi Cup and Bacardi Invitational Regatta. As ever, the 96th Bacardi Cup was the battle of all battles in the final race. Defending champions Mateusz Kuznirovic and Bruno Prada came, saw and conquered. Having won in 2020, 2021 and 2022, this year they did it again in huge style. They won the final race by over a minute and with it made history by claiming their fourth consecutive Bacardi Cup win. You know, uh, coming uh, second, uh... Uh, on the, in the general classification before the final race was the first time uh, for us. Before, uh, last year and the previous years, we were winning already. And this time we have to fight till the end, but I like it. I must say that uh, even this morning we said, this is the challenge, we like this kind of situations. We are not worried, we actually were looking forward for the, to make a beautiful race. In the J70, Brian Keane's team on Savasana did what they needed, finishing fourth in the final race to take the title. Placed second going into the day, Peter Duncan's Raza Mixter team reeled in their Melges 24 rivals to emerge victorious. A continuation of masterful sailing in the Melges 15 saw Rob Britz and Gillian Aid secure top billing with an advantage so crushing that they didn't need to finish the final race. Nobody could displace Christopher Alexander, Grace Howie and Rick Welsh in the VX1, as they again managed the competition skillfully to top the podium. In the 69F, flying Nika 47 had control of the racetrack from start to finish, winning all but one of their races. Teams celebrated at the prize giving and awards ceremony and enjoyed their final night of renowned Bacardi hospitality. Save the date for next year, March the 3rd to the 9th, 2024. It was a mighty weekend in Perth for the 2023 Hobie 16 West Australian State Championships, which was their 46th running. The racing was close, fast and exciting and the Hobie 16 certainly put on a great show with the course taking the full length of the bay in front of the Perth Rockingham foreshore.
had a great weekend of racing down at Rockingham at the, the Cruising Yacht Club of WA, the Hopi 16 Western Australian State Championships. We had some light shifty breeze in the morning and champagne flat water sea breeze conditions in the afternoon with really good tight racing throughout the fleet. Everyone had a great time and um, yeah, we, we're all pretty stoked. The Cruising Yacht Club of WA or TCYC did a fantastic job as did the volunteers from the Hobie Cat Association and I'd like to thank all those volunteers for really helping us out and making it a very good weekend of sailing. All the competitors had a really good time. We were very lucky this year. We had uh, three teams from over east with Pete and Juliet Bates from Queensland, Alec and Powers and Paddy, one from Queensland and one from New South Wales sailing together and Brian and Larissa. Yeah, we had some fantastic racing right throughout the fleet. There were close tussles, whether you were fighting for first and second or 24th or 25th, uh, everyone was really battling it out really hard. It was a great fleet, 27 boats, quite a few up on last, last year and we're really hoping to build on that next year. It's gonna be uh, another awesome event next year down at Geograph Bay Yacht Club, premier sailing in rural WA. So we're gonna encourage everyone to come and have a look at that one because if this was good, that'll be just as good. West Australian Hobie Association making us feel so welcome and our sponsors Darren Smith and Claire Biscoe. That's a great boat, boat that you got there, hey guys. Nice job. Very, very spoiled. And the racing is fantastic and the people over here are so lovely. We um, it's been pretty hard to crack the top five actually, so it's uh, really great racing. So thank you very much for WA. And what did you think about uh, sailing in Rockingham in this uh, beautiful Flat water conditions and the best I've sailed in. It's fantastic conditions. Yeah, flat water. Good breeze when it comes in. It's a bit dodgy when it's from the land. What did you think of the racing? Oh my god, it's so close. Like it's so cool to have a fleet like this, you know, just race. Um, and it's so close and it keeps things like keeps you on your toes like the whole time. It's constantly, yeah, thinking about where the next road is. Like I think it's really cool. The defending champion Andu team, John Winning Jr., Sevi Jarvan and Sam Newton, retained the crown of world champion with an outstanding victory in the winning group JJ Gilton and 18-foot skiff championship, which concluded on Sydney Harbour last Sunday. Andu finished in second place in the last race,
but the result was good enough to complete the championship with a total of 25 points after winning four races of the nine race regatta. We're about to start the final heat of this year's championship. Can Andu continue their dominance and get the job done or will there be a new winner and uh, the fight really for second and third? Breeze, Breeze just kind of left a little bit in the last minute left, here. Okay, well, Andrew's down the pin, sneaks up at the committee boat, and so is Marine Outlet. Finport's oh. going backwards there. Fin He's Finport's got himself in, jammed up. Finport's in trouble. He is. No, he's now right. starting to get got, rolling. Got rolling With again. Ten seconds. He's now okay then. Looking. Lazarus. Lazarus is going to be... Push the button, Smeg. Three, two. I think we're... Out. Ooh, yep. I think we're good, are we? Wow. Black Knight on port of the committee boat. He judged that very well. Yeah, I think all clear. We're away. The final heat is underway. So the Black Knight's been watching the Andu from last year, haven't they? Yeah, he just held back a whisker, ducked nice. a couple, and then nicely touched done. out on port. Nicely done, boys. Very good effort. But there's the shot from and above. Andu down at the pin yeah. with Shore and partners. Dave O'Connor. So, so they're all going into that western side of Bradley's head. Chance here that... Black Knight will lead the race, Pete, when he comes back yeah, on start. He's off camera, he's going, oh, there he is, top of screen left. Yeah. It's going under really good pressure. But anyway, it's a split. Speg in the middle of the line has just got onto port. Finport looks prominent. Finport led of the boats at the top end somehow. Anyway, Finport now tacky, and now the big long run. Down to Oblis, just shorter middle head on the harbour. Not windy. No. Bit of wind coming, 12, yeah. 14. Nothing, nothing too spectacular. Okay, Finport leads quite clearly. This is a good lead. He's uh, 30 seconds ahead or more. Yeah, the other guys have struggled in the light air at the top of the beat here. Yeah. And here's a few surprises. <laughs> yeah, okay. And who's going to be oh, Coco on the, on, the, on the Port Leila? Oh, Balmain Slake again. Second. Second. And, wow. And here comes the well, Japan. John O'Winnie, Zach Barnabas, and Harry Bethwaite. Third. Fourth. The Bigfoot. Fifth. The Black Knight. And Smeg. Sixth. Good breeze. Yeah, he's probably 12, 14 knots here. He looks as though he's going to lay here yep. around the headland and then. Pull away a little and get down to the omelets turning mark. Well, you're about to go into VMG run mode here, Pete. This After is the chasing pack. Fighting for fight, so pretty well judged set. Yeah, well, the body language on Keegan suggests he's comfortable. Yeah. There's the shot from behind, the shot from on the side. Yeah, he's around easily, round. Very good job. Here they go, and they're around. Oh, yeah, good. Gee, it's a big gap. We'll put the clock on, Pete. Okay. The breeze. There's the Here chasing comes the peloton. Pack. Breeze about 12, 14 knots. How are the guys that held up light? How did Andrew work out, Pete? Can you see? He's a long he's way back. back. The, no, he's back in the mix. He's just Is the he? wide spinnaker just below. Ah, oh, copy um, below Yandu. Yep. Yandu. Yeah, there. he's come so right back into this. Balmain's still hanging on for second there yeah. at the moment. Another gutsy performance by these Balmain boys. This is Megan Lazarus. Meanwhile, there's the lead eggs around, and on his way. Greece is up about 13, 14 maps, 15 knots here. Yep, just a nice clearance from Finport there, and textbook, right? Textbook low hooks all the way back to Nielsen Park. And do. Well, it's time they're going to do a bear away at the Windward Mark for this regatta. Yeah. In a good line. A good line too, Pete. Yeah, it's nice. 14, 15 knot. Yep. Little gust out of Rose Bay. Clear harbour. Lovely shot. Off she goes. There's the famous totem pole at the island. And they've got a, what about a 20 second lead over Smeg. Yeah. Smeg in the, at the corner, going a bit slowly, but here they go. 
But I think this will give him second in the championship. Yeah, and he needs a little dig back. Not that it counts for anything, but... Um... What can go wrong in attack? Not much, hopefully. Well played. Well played, Keegan. Yeah, don't go there, boys. No wind out to the left at all. There they go. I think you and I could win from here, Bucko. Just, just barely. Oh, he's finding it difficult. Yeah, no. There he goes. Well very, done. Very dusty. Well, and when I had a last look down, went Pete. The Andrew, <laughs> Andrew was still good for second. Okay, well, the title belongs to Herman winning for the first time, joining his father as a winner of the JJ's. His father, John, won in 2000. But now Herman just tacking for the final time to score a very, very emphatic championship victory. They will win by how many points? By 25? Seven, five, seven, Pete. Seven points, yeah. If they get there, do you Bruce, think they'll get there, Andrew? Bruce, <laughs> Bruce just a little light here yeah. at, the, at the death. I think they picked the worst spot here to put the finish line in this course all the time. Yeah, it's always tricky, isn't it? Yeah, well. Every tack heads you, heads you. But anyway, here they are. Three, two, one. There they go. Now he gets the halyard. They've done this a few times before. Sam Newton and Seve. Yeah, they still haven't figured out how to do it. <laughs> oh, yes, they have. There wind, it goes. wind would always be behind the, behind the stars. Yeah, there we go. That's the winner. There's the championship ribbon. Aloft now. Sam Newton, Seve Jarvin and John Winning Jr. Champions for 2023. It a matter of changing the game. Celebrating Women's Day with the amazing women in the Ineos Britannia team and Athena Pathway, still there's a lot of work to be done, but they are committed to diversity and inclusion in the sport. Growing up sailing, there was proportionally less girls during competitions, during events. And I remember finding out when there was a prize for first female I was thinking, I don't care, I don't want to be first female, I want to be first. It doesn't matter to me whether I'm competing against boys or girls, I want to win. Women in sailing is really important. We have an awful lot to offer and it's really easy to forget that. You know, by having females involved in the team you get better diversity, better kind of cross-section of ideas, so more ideas is going to lead to better solutions to problems. Yeah, we are not that many females but we are getting more and more and I think it's a uh a path that uh, more females should follow. We don't have the opportunity because we don't have the experience and we don't have, and it's like a circle that hopefully we will, we will break with the Women's America's Cup. I have been here for a while, so it's completely doable. You just have to try.